What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to the Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys, what is going on? It's Jay Campbell, of course, the founder of the new now Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my virtual studio, socially distancing with Dr. Heather Smith Fernandez. Heather, how are you? I'm great, Jay, from more than six feet away, doing wonderful. <laughs> Heather is in Florida. I am in Southern California for all of you guys who want to know. So we are practicing social distancing. Um, we are in absolutely unspeakable times. Um, actually, Heather is the first physician that I have done a podcast with since all of this happened two weeks ago. Can you believe it's almost two weeks? It's crazy. You know, it, right? It's yeah. crazy. It feels like it's been a lifetime and yet just yesterday all at the I same know, time. I know. Yeah. So anyway, it's, uh, let me just give you guys um, Heather's pedigree. I mean, she has a very illustrious bio, but she's a board certified anesthesiologist and of course, fellowship trained interventional pain physician. She's also one of the top optimization doctors. She works for Live Health or works with Live Health. I've had her on podcasts before. She was just on the Dave Asprey podcast. She's incredibly knowledgeable, resourceful. She understands hormones for both men and women. I mean, I could go on and on and on, but I want to talk about what's happening today. Um, so let me just, before we go into the first um, discussion point, because we got a lot of them, obviously we're going to go all over the place with COVID and stuff like that. Heather, give us a story, a truthful story of what is happening right now, not just globally with this pathogen and virus, but in the United States. And before you answer, you and I were talking off air, a lot of people are confused right now. It's difficult for people to get factual, truthful information. And then in my opinion, it's even more, it's more difficult for them to discern what is real and what isn't due to the overwhelm of social media. But what is your take on everything? Well, I'm glad you asked me that because I, I think that, um, especially those of us in the medical field, want to not only be as transparent with everything we know, and that and that changes, right? You know, rapidly as we learn more about this particular virus, but to not frighten people, but to also not sugarcoat anything. We Absolutely. we want everybody to be calm and yet um, doing their part and everything they can do to not have to, you know, be sick. Um, this is still a preventable um, virus. It's a preventable infection if you don't come in contact with somebody right. who's infected. Um, and there's a, a lot of stories flying around about um, why, you know, should we be social distancing? Should we be shutting down the economy? Well, nobody wants the economy to shut down. But I have some sobering statistics for people. Um, and, and these are some rough numbers. I'm not, I'm not giving the exact numbers. Um, doctor, there's another physician who just was um, featured on CNN who did uh, an actual breakdown of how many exact ventilators we have in the United States. But here's the, the thing. This virus is a respiratory virus. Right. And um, it likes to attach to lung tissue and it can make people very, very sick. It's um, viruses are typically something, a lot of times we provide supportive care until the body can overcome the infection. And in the case of a serious respiratory virus, sometimes that supportive care will require a ventilator or, right. you know, assisted breathing. And, um, you know, what's happening in Italy right now is utterly heartbreaking, and it's not because they don't have good medical care. They don't have, it happens so fast for them, and they don't have enough equipment to actually take care of people. Right, so if right. we look at, let's say we have roughly 332 million people in the United States. That's a pretty rough number, because we know that there's a lot of people who don't get counted in that sense. Right? Yeah, illegals, right. Yeah, well, and, in your state, in my state, yes. Well, yeah, and, and so but people who are here, nonetheless, who need to be taken care of. Yes. Um, so let's say it's 332 million. Yes. If 80% of our whole population came in contact, let's say 100% came in contact with the virus, 80% of them will probably have mild or no symptoms. Right. They're not going to be affected. But let's take the 20% that are going to be affected, which is actually a fairly high number. Very high. Out of the 20% that are going to be affected, if only 5% of that 20 need a ventilator, 
that's 3,320,000 ventilators. In our country right now, I think we have roughly 130,000, maybe that's less insane. than that. And that doesn't account for the ventilators that are already in use. Yeah, so think about that. So we're literally 3,000, doing the quick math, back in the napkin math, we're 3,000% deficient. That's insane. Yeah, so, um, and, and these are very conservative numbers. Right. So if you had 26 people who needed a ventilator and only one ventilator for, for them, who has to make that decision? So yeah. we're trying to not get to that place. We, we definitely have... Um, uh, companies, there's car companies that are converting their plants into right, making. Ford. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was um, Tesla. Uh, I, I'm not actually sure who, which companies, but I know that they're getting some recognition. Yeah. For, no, it's Ford. I, there's an article this morning. Ford? Uh, okay, wonderful. Yeah. Kudos to them then, because if we can, you know, that's something. They can't really sell cars, Heather. They might as well sell <laughs> ventilators. <laughs> well, so, so trying to prepare for the worst um, isn't meant to frighten anybody. It's really meant to prepare for the worst. Um, and, you know, the, that's, that should highlight to everybody why sh we should really make very big efforts to not be one of those 20% who's going to get really sick. Right. Now, I, I think that um, people who are doing their part, that's excellent. And I applaud everybody because, you know, people's kids are out of school. People are out of work. It's a very, very stressful time yeah. um, for sure. There are some things, and that's why I think some of the things you and I are on, you know, we're so, com we feel the same way about get your body as healthy as you can get it yeah. Yeah. so that yeah. you can be one of those people that your immune system is able to conquer this before it makes you super, super sick. So, so, so one, well, one of the things I wanted to just ask you is, you know, that's going around now is, and I think you know this now too, you know, from the articles and stuff, but vitamin C, yes. the huge combatant to this, um, what would you recommend people right now? And I know you, you know, you even sent me that you have um, a, a form of therapy. So go ahead and talk about like wh how you would, if you're just an average everyday person who mm -hmm. watches this podcast at home, what would you tell them right now to build their immunity? I specifically with vitamin C, if you, if you can get um, IV vitamin C, then you should, uh, I know. Um, and there's probably going to be a couple weeks where that's not going to be an option because people are really right. trying to recognize non-essential and, you know, getting a preventative IV is not considered essential therapy right, right, right. now, right. but right. I would be contacting somebody in your area where you can get yourself schedule to get IV vitamin C because the IV version of vitamin C in the higher doses, we're talking about 10 grams, even 20 grams yeah, yeah, of yeah. vitamin C um, has, is really, really promising. And it's so good for the rest of your body. There's very little reason to not do that. So, so, the, most re so the most recent, I don't mean to cut you off, but just to add to what you're saying, it's 500 milligrams to two grams every 30 to 60 minutes. And this is oral to yeah. combat this, especially at the initial onset of symptoms. So that's exactly what you're saying, which is literally, you might be taking 20 grams of C a day, which obviously is probably going to cause loose stool, but who cares if it's going to beat this pathogen? Right. And you can certainly work your way up to that. Right. Um, make sure if you've never taken vitamin C before, there are some people who um, have a, a little bit of a genetic snip that vitamin C becomes a little intolerable. Right. Most people know if they're that person, but if they've never taken vitamin C before, they should probably take a small dose to make sure they're fine with it right. or discuss it with their doctor. But the oral, yes, oral vitamin C at six, 6,000 milligrams to 10,000 milligrams a day, if you can get that um, and you can take that, certainly take at least 10,000 a day if you can. It's, there's, it's a little short supply right now. It's not right, that easy right. to come by. Um, right. But it is, we're planning for the long term. It's not just for the immediate. This is something that we are probably going to have in our lives for, for months and months. So yes. I, I honestly, see. I'll add to that. I spoke to a guy yesterday who's the most advanced researcher on the planet with this. And this is a very, very potent bioweapon, clearly engineered, whether it was loosed by accident or loosed intentionally doesn't matter this is designed to kill and he told me that this is going to be here heather for three to five years and it will mm -hmm. come back around as you know there's phases to it mm -hmm. and so you're right what you just said is absolutely true people need to move forward in the new post bioweapon covid whatever you want to call it world with the idea that you're going to need c and there's some other things that he talks about too there's like a very powerful uh, antimicrobial mushroom called chaga, which people drink in their teas and their coffees. These are going to become very profoundly mainstream, widespread uh, interventions that we're going to all be using. 
There's no doubt about it. I mean, they're literally already telling us that by the fall of this year is when the second round of this comes through. Because the theory is that it was let go in the military Olympics in Wuhan in October of last year. And so we're almost already six months into this pathogen being spread around the world. As you know, a lot of people think they'd probably already built up immunity to it because they had it in January or December. Right. right? A cold. Yes. I think, I didn't tell you this, I'll, I'll say now, but I think that both of my daughters and Monica got this um, because my daughter had all the symptoms. Her voice went away. This is in, she went to her cheer, her national cheer tournament was in Vegas. Mm -hmm. And when we came home, she lost her voice and she couldn't breathe and she was like really sick. And so, you know, we gave her augmenting. She had, we went in to see our, P, our PCP and, you know, everything was seemingly okay, but she was sick. And then my other daughter got it. And she, you know, didn't have this bad. And as you, as you said, some people don't even get symptomology and other people get whacked. And then Monica got it and she lost her voice for literally three days, assuming that's what it was. Mm -hmm. But I've heard many stories from a lot of people in January, in February, who said, hey, I was down with something that just knocked me on my ass for three days. And I'm thinking I probably had it. So that's probably the truth, correct? I, well, I, I agree with you. I think that there have been a lot of people who actually did come in contact with it right. um, and either got sick and got better. Um, there were some unique things, even for people that got better, that, that shortness of breath, that air hunger that isn't right. typical with a regular flu. Right. Um, that's been a symptom that's been uniquely described by patients who said, I've had the flu before. And this was something different. Nasty. I didn't have, you know, I just couldn't breathe. And well, I'm I didn't get it. So high. So I, if, the, if my kids had yeah. it and my wife had it and I was kissing her and we were intimate or whatever, and I never got sick. So maybe, I mean, and, and you know, if you read the information, it's, it, it targets specific population groups supposedly. And I'm in that population group. It says it's supposed to be 40 to 60 year old men, you know, and I'm 49 mm -hmm. um, and I didn't get it. Now, maybe again, based on the pathophysiology of the disease and how it mig migrates and stuff, maybe I get it the second time or whatever. But as you know, just, just to clarify for everyone, People with non-compromised immune systems should survive it, right? That would be, that, that's everything that we know right now. We feel that, yes. I mean, we, and, and the more we learn about things that help us win, right. um, the better we're going to be able to treat people. Exactly. Um, it, it's, I, I think that one of the things that we're really m wishing we had right now, and especially in um, the medical community, are more tests that are fast that we could actually test who already has antibodies. So we can right. get a better sense of how many people in the population um, have already had this, have, you know, are asymptomatic or are now um, immune, at least to this version of this virus. I think it will help um, quiet some fears and maybe um, let us target more of our um, resources and energy towards the people who need to be protected a lot more. And, yeah. um, and really just, you're right, the immune system is what keeps us well. So let's build our immune system. The regular right. flu this year, our regular old flu was horrible. It was brutal right. and right. awful, and it was much more severe than what we've seen in years past. So and maybe that, it, was that, it, it was that too. That's maybe a lot of people were misdiagnosed. How many people do you know were diagnosed with pneumonia? And we know that that's the number one misdiagnosis with this because that's the symptomology. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, you know, um, and then they're treated with the, under the assumption. Um, you but know, let them so, go home and then five days later they're like, uh-oh. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I, I feel like um, with this, with the knowledge that we have, practicing good social distancing, there's also some, some, um, some interesting research that, is, that has been surfacing about how it's really being passed. And, and a lot of the experts kind of agree that it's, contact with surfaces right so touching things and touching your face right. touching right. things and so that you know that's something that's so hard for people to realize how many times they actually touch their face if you put cheeto dust or blue paint on your <laughs> fingertips and then just spent a whole day and looked in the mirror at the end of the day how many little things you had all over your face um we'd be so surprised how often we actually touch our face by the way you are right about that heather um the latest stuff and that you know that i've been saying and, and 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 read and you know i have the latest a lot of the same context that you have is it stays dormant on inanimate surfaces for up to 20 to 24 days and again as you said the research on this and the information that we are getting on this is literally updating in real time 
by the day. And they definitely know. I watched a guy last night, a disease, uh, an epidemiologist, disease, infectious disease specialist in Chicago. And I mean, they are like afraid to tell people. And again, this is not for fear. As you said earlier in this podcast, this is always for information. This is high vibration show. But they are afraid to really put out the real information on how nasty this thing is. It's like they, whoever designed this, designed this to kill a lot of people. It's that simple, the way the disease works. But as you said, thankfully, we are getting more and more information. We know that vitamin C, we know that chaga, we know that the two medications, which is the malaria medication, which is uh, HCQ, I can't, mm-hmm. can't pronounce it. Hydroxychloroquine, yeah. yeah. There you go. Or which chloroquine. In mm-hmm. very short supply right now, which yes. I'm sure will be remedied fast. And then also the, the, the antibiotics, uh, z pack with zinc. And that's what's now being used in the front lines in Italy, the front lines in New York City. And by the way, um, also not being reported, but it's not very good in New York City right now. Yes, that's true. It's not good. So Again, no fear. If you watch this podcast, you need, as Heather said, and as I've been saying, you need to be practicing the precautions that have been given to us. The reason they shut down this, the world is because they know without causing fear, and we're here to tell you the truth, that this is very, very dangerous. And you should be practicing social distancing and you should be washing your hands and not touching your face. And you should be going out into the open air and getting sunlight and vitamin D and exposing yourself. But you should not be at the beach with thousands of other people or going to fast food restaurants. As you know, all these people in the United States are still doing it. They're not paying attention. They're not practicing the practices of whatever they call it, social distancing. So anyway, no fear here. But you absolutely do have to take the precautions necessary um, to, to, as you said, to, to keep yourself from getting it because you're not going to get any problems if you're not exposed to someone who has it. Right. It's not going to creep into your house. It's, <laughs> it, it's going to be brought in. Exactly. No, you know. The it, CIA is not throwing, <laughs> it's not blowing in. What do they say? You know, it's not chemtrails, people, okay? They're not chemtrailing you with this disease. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's totally true. But as you know, mm-hmm. a lot of young people have not been paying attention. You know, I saw stuff on this weekend, or not this weekend, but like on Tuesday from the weekend of all these people thinking it's like a big vacation. Yes, I know. And there, and people are dealing with the confinement and the stressors the stress. in different ways. But yeah, I yeah. think that, um, and um, Dr. Dr. Emily Porter is the one who did a very, very, very specific with real numbers. And, you know, she mentioned this, this was, you know, this has been now picked up on all the international news channels, that especially for the young people that may um, feel like, well, if I get sick, I'll be fine. Yeah, it's the flu, but, right. But they're, they're going to have a loved one who, if, if, if one in 25 or one in 50 people are the only ones that are going to get the treatment that they need, then are they going to be the one that decides? It's just, it's important to, to be thinking about all of your family members and making sure that we're all doing our part. So that's, a, that's um, great advice. Great advice. And yeah. actually to, to your point on that too, um, it's important in my opinion, and I'm sure you agree is that if you have a loved one, an elder who is confined right now and by themselves, pick up the phone and call them, you know, do a a FaceTime if they have the technology proficiency, comfort them, right? Because so many people, as you said, are in absolute fear right now. Yes. And they're bouncing off the walls and they're they're not used to being in one place and they're, they're, um, you know, they're, they're, being funneled information and not necessarily all positive. And, and yeah, <laughs> right. I totally agree with you. I think that's an excellent idea. And I also want to make all of your listeners aware that just recently, um, the insurance companies and the government has lifted some restrictions on being able to communicate with your doctor right. through, so you don't have to walk into the office right. for a well person visit or for a follow up, even for certain medication refills that normally would have required an office visit. So if you're concerned, call your doctor's office. Um, don't, don't just assume you have to go any place um, because th- this, is, this is new. It's very new in all the yeah. history of, uh, you know, of us being able to do this. So they're really making some big accommodations to help people out. And I also want to encourage people, this isn't going to, you're not going to have to stay in your house forever. Right. You know, right. we, we, we do need to do what's called flattening the curve so right, that we exactly. can save lives. And, and we will know, I'm glad you brought that up. We will know from what I've been told and what I understand, 
we will understand the curve by about mid-April, correct? About April 12th. I, I, that's, that's what I understand as well. That's the yeah. same information I've been getting is we will know a lot more about what our trajectory is at that time. Right. It, it, it's my opinion, and we're going to get into some of your discussion points here, and this is all good and, and very highly prescient information. And obviously, it's more important than anything else right now than you and I could talk about, even though we have amazing topics. But the reality is this. We're in a new world. The system, the financial system, the employment system, everything that everybody was held and beholden to is kind of decimated right now. Where we go from here, it's all speculation, right? Like mm -hmm. in, in, in support of what you were saying, though, if you're somebody who watches this um, podcast, you know, Heather is one of the Live Health people. If you've been told, and obviously I'm making this news right now because I'm adding to what you just said, but if you've been told that you can't work with her because of your state or some telemedicine bullshit or whatever, I would reach out again because I think we both know that this disease is going to drop a lot of the restrictions. And if they're not currently dropped, they will be dropped pretty soon. Because if what I saw last night, Heather, was the latest data was if the curve is flattened and they know that by say April 15th to April 25th in that range, it's still likely that we will be confined until July, right? So that's eight to 12 weeks. And again, guys, they're not doing this to kill the economy or to keep you at home. They're doing this to save lives. It's that simple. So anyway, if that is the case, and we don't know, but if it is, and you want to work with her or any doctor that you know, provides telemedicine and is somebody that I recommend, this is the time to reach out. Because as you said, the restrictions are being dropped. And I do know from the legislation that's coming forward now, as I told you that somebody in New York City told me that all of the uh, restrictions or restrictive uh, prohibitions with telemedicine are all going to be dropped. So it's essentially going to be work with the best doctor in a time of crisis and need, you know, assuming that you can and let everything else drop. And so I would, I highly encourage anyone who watches this podcast again, I, you know, Dr. Heather is one of the best doctors in the world and optimizing people, whether you're a male or male, male or female, you'll, you'll have a link in this podcast. You can reach out to her. You can connect her. You can obviously work with her who live health. You can go direct to her website. But anyway, it's a conversation that people should not be afraid to have now. Cause as you know, there were people that watched your live health podcast and were denied because they live in a state that they say, Oh, well, it doesn't work yet. You know, and I'll just name one state like Louisiana. Right. So there are other States out there that have the same restrictive issues. I would assume that they're going to be dropped. Would you agree? I would certainly hope so. And I think that yeah. we need to, you know, make the need known. Um, you know, we're, we're educating uh, doctors, especially about, um, you know, hormone education has been around for a while. Peptide education is newer. Um, I actually do teach doctors about peptides. So as we, um, my peptology protocols yep. is about educating doctors how to take care of patients. And as we you know, are able to make more, um, a bigger footprint across the country for more physicians that are closer to all of our, our, our patients, be able to manage, you know, their peptides and do a really good job with them. We're doing this the best that we can through telehealth and we just need to get more doctors on the peptide wagon. Yeah, of course. So I want you to talk about that right now while we're there. So just what is a really amazing peptide intervention for those that have access to peptides right now? And I know it's limited and, you know, you know, you have Wells or TaylorMade or you have research chemical companies, but for anyone who has access to peptides right now, from an interventional standpoint to fight this, you know, cytokine created storm that this, you know, virus creates, what are, what are you, what would you recommend? Um, number one would be thymosin alpha. And yep. I think that's becoming um, a much more common term now. It's really, um, be becoming well known. What people may not know about thymosin alpha is how safe it is. Right. It's such a safe peptide. Yep. It's so effective at helping your immune system. I got eight vials in my refrigerator in my in my uh, in my in my in my bad room right now. <laughs> it's part of my protocol when I wake up and I go to bed. There you go. So that that's the number one because it's it's so broad. It you know so many people that I can't think of a single person that couldn't benefit from that peptide that would be contraindicated with that particular peptide off the top of my head. Right. So that, that's definitely an indicator right now. Um, vitamin C and thymus and alpha. There are a couple of other, um, there's another peptide that is very, very powerful antiviral, anti-infective peptide called LL37. Right. Now LL37 is, is to be treated with great respect because um, it can cause a big Herxheimer reaction in patients. Right. What that means is that, They'll be, they're carrying 
little pieces of old infection around or a bio burden is what right. we kind of call that. Right. And it's going to start to die off and they can feel very, very like they're detoxing in a huge way. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, then they're not going to like you very much for giving them that peptide. Right. So you have to be very careful and very picky about when you pull out that big gun, but it's, but it's a very, very effective anti-infective peptide. So that would be then if someone was at the initial onset of symptoms where they were assumed, because yes. let's, let's be honest now, and you're the person to be honest with, yes. you already said, going to a hospital or an urgent care right now, if you are otherwise healthy, is a high risk endeavor, correct? It's, it's just, yeah, it's really not <laughs> what you want to be doing. If you have a true emergency, then of course you don't stay home. Right. Um, but you don't, you don't yeah. go to the emergency room unless right. it's really an emergency. You work with you like yeah. this. <laughs> I mean, seriously, I mean, let's be honest. I mean, you're the first person, you know, the first doc. I mean, aren't you so lucky? <laughs> to have a podcast like this about this, but this is what people need to do. And we are being very socially responsible right now by being honest and saying, Heather, do not go to your local urgent care center. That's where the virus is. People that are contaminated and infectious are there. Yep. That's well, yes. And that's often the case, but especially right now. Yes. Um, yeah, that's true. And so, and so if we can, we can really do a pretty decent, obviously I prefer to do a physical exam and be able to actually be in front of a patient, but there's a lot that can be ascertained through a call just like this. Yes. Um, and we can yeah. certainly what we call triage the situation. Yes. Um, yeah. So I, I think that, you know, definitely, and I wanted to make a point before we, before we pass too, too far along the subject, the medications, the hydroxychloroquine and the azithromycin, they do not prevent you from getting the disease. Right. So going out and getting yourself some and taking it now, exactly. thinking it's going to prevent it. I know that probably sounds silly to say it, but I just want to make sure people no, know that. glad you did. Yeah. That is really As I've been telling people, it's really only for people that are already hospitalized and are in, you know, very severe pronounced symptoms and you give them as an intervention, but you're right. Absolutely. It's not a preventative. That's vitamin C, that's chaga mushroom, that's vitamin D in the sun. That's a, a raised vibration without yes. fear and, and stress. And alpha. <laughs> no, but think yeah. about that, right? Like how many people, and, and I'm glad you brought this up. This is really seeing perfectly, but how many people are in fear right now, Heather? Yes. They're literally in fear. What happens? You lower your immune response, your in cortisol. Yes. You're, you're literally so low vibration when you're in fear that you're literally receptive, if not almost, you know, accepting what can happen to you, you know, especially if you're around other contaminated people. So I think it's very important to maintain a state of calm, a sense of peace, obviously meditation, mm -hmm. mindfulness training, inner work, prayer, whatever you do, that is so important right now because being stressed is absolutely going to just crash your immune system totally crash it and it and will do nothing for your mindset either so yeah. I, I i i think it's a good time to to talk about that let's let's, do let's it. talk do about it. everything that you can do when it comes to heart-centered meditation five minutes a couple times a day yep. can change your coherence and it can change how the discharge coming out of your brain using up all of your nutrients using up your hormones um changing the balance of energy in your body you know, keep keeping consistent with, you know, fighting the fear, really fighting the fear and, um, and allowing yourself to be in a state of coherence. I think that's super important. You're right about the, the cortisol is really a big deal. Um, we talk about sleep because when people are just laying awake and worrying or they're laying awake watching the news all night or, you know, they're not allowing their body to have a regular circadian rhythm. Right. You're not focused on making sure that you get eight hours of sleep. If you don't get sleep at night, your immune system doesn't work. Your cortisol system is screwed up. Your pain is worse. Right. Lack of sleep makes pain worse. We used to think that pain was the reason that you didn't sleep. And that's true for people who have chronic pain. That's, that's often part of it. But the other, the reverse is true as well. It's disrupted sleep literally makes the body intolerant right. to Pain. It, it causes a state of hyperalgesia where something that should just feel like pressure actually feels like pain. It's, a, it's pretty significant research that's been done on this. So while you're in your quarantine or while you're trying to practice your social distancing, let that be an opportunity to make yourself healthier. Right. Start, you know, turning down the, all the noise that's in your brain and raise your vibration. 
Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, so talk about your meditation. I love how you said heart centered five minutes twice a day. Um, you know, back to what you were just saying about sleep. And obviously, you know me, I mean, like sleep is, I, I, that's all I talk about, right? Like, if you are in your house, sleeping next to these goddamn EMF, you know, transponders, <laughs> you are killing yourself, your sleep is never going to be polyphasic, it's never going to be stage three and stage four. I mean, it's just terrible. I mean, how many people wake up in the middle of the night, go to the bathroom and look at their social media or check their text message? It's insanity. But back to what you're saying, like, give us some really amazing sleep hygiene. And then also talk about your two five minute heart center meditations. I love that. So the sleep hygiene, I, I love how everything that you have, have been talking about for quite some time, keep the cell phone out of the room. You can use an alarm clock, a regular old alarm clock, <laughs> you know, it just use it and, and make sure Go you- Go to have, bed at a normal yeah. time. Oh, and- and, have the sunlight wake you up, when, right? When, when the sun goes down, that you're not supposed to be watching screens and eating and things like that because it, it messes with our circadian rhythms. And so, yes, sleep hygiene is really important. And I think the routine is, is, is also just as important. We are creatures of habit. We all know this. We try to break a habit. How hard is it to break a habit once it's right. there? Right. So using that, you know, make sure you don't have a smart meter right outside your bedroom um, wall as well. Um, pe some people don't realize how sensitive they are to EMF and radiation and things like that. Make sure your Wi-Fi is turned off. Move out of your house if you have a smart meter. <laughs> Well, I mean, at least in Florida, you can have them remove the smart meter. You're not forced to have one, but you do have to actually ask for it to be changed back to a manual meter. And, you know, there are some people who are more sensitive to it than others, right. but it's not good for any of us. No, it's and, not. Um, make sure the Wi-Fi is turned off. Just yes, don't have yes. it running at night. You don't need it running at night. Turn it off. If you actually walk through your house with an EMF meter. Oh, it's incredible. Feet, it's crazy. Um, put an EFF, put it, I'm, I'm, I don't mean to interrupt you, but you got me going. <laughs> put, an EMF, put an EMF meter up against a very high level droid or iPhone, right? This is the highest level iPhone Pro 11 Max. And by the way, I wish I could throw this like a Frisbee out into the street right now. <laughs> But put this up next to it, and Heather, you will be aghast. I mean, it is, I mean, who knows what these things are doing radiating our bodies because we don't have any long-term data. There's no studies for that, bro. I mean, it's like incredible to think that we literally sleep next to these things. I mean, I don't, you don't, but people right. do. This right. is the norm. Right. It's, it's, not, it's not the best choice. Make sure the Wi-Fi is turned off. And then go through your room and make everything really dark. Yes. Cover yeah. up all those little LEDs with black electrical tape. It's amazing how our body is so incredible that even through closed lids, your, your eyes can sense yeah. the smallest amount of light. Yes. And when you start practicing that, you'll notice that a little tiny light that could be, you know, 30 feet away you're, you'll open your eyes and say, where's that little light coming from? It's crazy how sensitive so you really you know, are. Monica and I just came back from Cabo. We were probably the last people to get out of Mexico before all this nonsense happened, but we were at a really nice five-star hotel. And I swear, and you know this, like the higher, the better the place that you stay at now has so much blue light, yes. like everywhere. Like all, we were all the gadgets. <laughs> yeah. We were like waking up. There'd be like a, a, a coffee maker. Or there would be like the, 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 the refrigerator, the wine refrigerator has a blue light. I mean, it's insane, dude. It's, I mean, I'm not kidding you. The first night that I was there, I literally was putting clothes over the light yes. because it's so much. But you're right. We're so sensitive and desensitized to it. And, mm -hmm. and until you fix that, and you know, that's part of your sleep hygiene. You're right, Heather. I would, I would, you know, I mean, obviously I agree with you, but I would literally debate anyone that I think that sleep and lack of it is the greatest threat to everything, right? Because we already know about EDCs. We already know about GMO food. We know about the air, the water, everything is polluted, but it's the blue light and the screen enslavement. That's what's destroying us. I mean, Heather, my, I used to have fire pilot vision. I had 2010 and now I'm so nearsighted. It's insane. Mm. And it's because I'm on screens all day. I mean, obviously I'm always wearing these, but I mean, even these, I mean, it's like, you're know, right. Yeah, you should be putting yours back on. Yeah, is that Dave's? Yes. The 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 I I it's either it's either Dave's or Swanwick's. But like I literally, it's amazing how many times I tell people I'm like, dude, the screens are killing you. Mm -hmm. And I you know I'm really conscientious about this now. But when I go home, I don't put my you know I've got my 
night i've got dave's go to you know the the red the amber ones but like mm -hmm. I, I i don't remember always to put them on and my wife will see me and she's like why are your glasses not on right it's like i mean it, we just we do have to start taking advantage and holding ourselves accountable to the understanding of what this light is doing to us it totally disrupts our circadian rhythm it does and it's totally preventable it's one of those little things that you that we can do for ourselves yeah um i'm a big proponent for melatonin oh, we, yeah. we need melatonin melatonin exists in every living organism on the planet even single-celled organisms have melatonin by the way they're and, even using melatonin now as yes. one of the uh, combatants to covid too for what it does yep. for restoration a hundred percent. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Um, I, I've, I've, I have amazing stories that have been told to me by one of the melatonin experts who wrote the book in the nineties about melatonin. You talk about Russ, um, right? Yes. Yeah. He's insane, dude. Yes. That guy, that guy is, I need, I need to get him to come on a podcast. He's the funniest guy ever. Right. He's like, ah, oh, when he starts lecturing, he's like, just so you guys know, before you ask, I'm older than dirt. Yes, he does. <laughs> He's and amazing. He takes like 150 milligrams of melatonin before he goes to bed. If I took 150 milligrams of melatonin, I don't think I'd ever wake up. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I think that for each person, there's a threshold for, for how much it helps you sleep. But everything beyond that is a neural antioxidant. Yeah. We don't have that many things that can get in the brain and clean up the junk. And melatonin is one of them. And it's so, so safe. So what we, I got to ask you then, because I'm a total groggy non-responder you know stickler and i have had conversations about this what what do you recommend to someone who just cannot use melatonin without being like drunk the next day um sometimes you're just going to be more sensitive to it and you're you need a lower dose because you can't function like that so if i take um, one milligram heather i sleep like a baby mm -hmm. but i literally am useless until like noon the next day and it's always been that way monica takes seven milligrams i take 60. You take 60? Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Did you start up? Did you titrate low yeah, and go to there? Yeah. I started with 10. And I talked to Russ about this, though. And he was explaining how, um, how beneficial it is as an I antioxidant. I, believe me, I know um, all the research. I've read yeah. three books on it. It's just, I'm and telling you, if I take. There may be, I, there's, here's another suggestion, which yeah, isn't yeah. a very popular one, but just something to think about. You may be trying to recover from old sleep deficit. Yeah. Our body never forgets when we've denied it sleep. We learn this through the residence, you know, in residency, um, you basically don't sleep for four or five years. It's, it's you know, kind of brutal on that. Yeah, of course. And they talked, the, the research started really coming out um, about how the sleep deprivation was so um, detrimental to your reaction time and things like that. So that's when they started changing the residency work hours. But your, your body, there's a part of your body and your brain that are, are going to grab onto that sleep as much as they can until that sleep deficit is satisfied. And there's a theory that that is just there until it's satisfied. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm literally, this is such an amazing podcast and we have the perfect time right now because if I don't wake up tomorrow, <laughs> I don't have any really big time responsibilities. <laughs> right. And maybe you just really needed I'm gonna take 60 milligrams tonight. And I'm going to say, this is the Dr. Heather Smith Fernandez approved dose. And I'm going to see what happens now. Okay. I didn't tell you this because we weren't talking off air about this, but I have been sleeping and I would say that I'm one of those people, but I have been sleeping more since this all started because it was something that I put down in my daily ritualistic calendar that I live by saying that, you know what, Jay Campbell is going to sleep eight hours and F off for all the people that expect me to be going, you know, hardcore by 730 in the morning. So I'm, I'm staying awake later. I'm spending time with my two daughters more, which my wife is happy about, mm -hmm. but I'm going to bed later because when they go to bed at like 10 or 1030 and they're obviously staying up two hours past their bedtime right now. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I'm then Jay Campbell and Jay Campbell, right? I'm on the computer, which I know is bad, but I got to work. I got to get what I got to get done. I write so much, but um, I'm going to do it. I'm going to take 60 milligrams tonight. I'm going to go to bed at 11 o'clock and I'm going to see if I wake up at seven or 6.45 or whatever, if I feel better. And if I feel like shit, I'm gonna text you tomorrow and I'm just gonna yep. say, hey, I, I, I tried the experiment, it didn't work. I took the Pepsi challenge and I feel like <laughs> But you never know, honestly, I've never gone up that high because I have been afraid. And again, I'm very, like you, I'm very familiar with Russ. I've seen him lecture like five mm -hmm. times. I think he's amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, I've shared his data on huge tweet storms with people. 
you know, I've seen it. He takes 150 milligrams, right? He does. Well, he takes 100 on a regular basis. And when he travels, he'll right. take, you know, he'll, he'll increase that. And, um, and as you know, maybe all of your listeners don't know, but he's as sharp as a tack. Oh, I my mean, God. He's unbelievable. His brain unbelievable. is insane. He remembers everything. Yes. And, and yes. by the way, how old is he? He's got to be in his 80s, right? He is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he is. In that guy is unbelievable. It, it, I would love to get He doesn't do podcasts, though, does he? I haven't talked to him in a while. I don't so think he does I, podcasts. Sure. I think the last time I talked to him at AMMG in Miami, he's just like, dude, he's like, I wouldn't even know how to turn a fucking computer on. <laughs> 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 it's true, though, right? Like his generation. But by the way, that's a good thing for him. It is a good thing for him. He's, he's doing. He's Heather, doing. I think that you and I and people like us all know that maybe the best thing that can come from this, out of this, when all of this is over, whether it's six months from now, four years from now, two months from now, whatever, is like you said at the very beginning of this, that we have become such an on-demand, instant gratification, always on, always ready to go, that this shit just needs to blow up. And we need to go back to being community-based, information based not social media generated fear porn and all the other nonsense i mean i i truly hope that all of it just goes away i mean i don't know if it will but i think that we could all still get along with just less you know always on on the go rapid fire and and, and get back to more communal roots do you think that that would be better for society I think it would be much better for society if you, if, you know, if you look at the the blue zones and, and the studies that were done within the long living, um, that that cons- there there isn't a lot of computer activity going on in those blue zones. For the By the way, do you know who I'm interviewing? It's so funny that you just brought that up. There's no coincidences. I'm interviewing at three thirty, Dr. Mario Martinez about that very thing. Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> yes, I mean, you know, some of the some of the fundamentals are, um, you know, they they're they're healthy. They, they move their, they move their body. You just, because you're confined inside, you can still move your body. You can still walk around outside if you're keeping social distancing. You know, we are not meant to be immobile, sedentary right. creatures that, that, that sets off the wrong chain of chemicals in our body. Um, and they have a great sense of community. They have um, the elders in their community, the wise older members who help you know, um, give counsel to the younger members. Right. They spend time together. They have joy. Right. They have um, this, some sort of um, prayer, spiritual sure, connection, sure. Um, and they eat well. And I mean, I'm summarizing, obviously, but no, it's good for us to be able to get back to that that sense of um, what's really important and spend time with our families and take better care of ourselves. I think as Americans, I've been chasing sleep most of my life. So it's yeah. near and dear to my heart as well. Um, some people just aren't as good at sleeping as other people are, but I think it's super, super important. And um, for us to be laying awake, thinking about things that just aren't things we should be laying awake thinking about, we should be resting and, you know, staying positive. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Okay. So there's a couple of points that I want you to cover because you're such an expert on it uh, with pain and also testosterone in women. Um, I know we talked about the, the disease and, and fighting it and doing all of that. And obviously that's much more socially responsible right now. Cause I mean, the, we're in a new world. Right. But I, I do want you to talk a little bit about your expertise. So, you know, just give me a high level summary about pain. I mean, obviously you are an expert in this, you know, essentially a global leader, thought leader on this kind of stuff. So just talk a little bit about pain and um, you know, the options that are really out there today. And then and, and before you even say it, you know, let me just set you up in the idea that, you know, there's a lot of people that have, when they hear that word, they instantly think, oh my God, you know, the pain pill clinics and all that nonsense, the hype, you know, hysteria and stuff like that. So, you know, I just wanted to put that out there, but just talk a little bit about like what, cause so many people suffer from pain, as you know, but talk about that. Yes. Um, well, pain is, is, is something that will suck all of the joy out of a person's life. It, it just literally is like a black hole right. of, of sucking everything good, everything positive, everything fun um, out of somebody. And uh, we, we can really help people with pain. And I'm not talking about opiates. Um, opiates, you know, that's a, that's a conversation probably for another time, because there's sure, a lot sure. to say about that. But Opiates are not a good long-term solution um, for pain. And the body, you know, it, it, trying to get to the source of why somebody is having pain is certainly a good thing to be doing and not just right. say, well, we'll just throw a Band-Aid on it and we'll just throw a Band-Aid on it every three hours or four hours. 
that that's not a good solution. And nobody really wants to be on those medications. No. You know, there's a social stigma about it that I think needs to go away. Nobody wants to be a slave to a medication bottle. Nobody wants, a, that's a, no quality of life. Um, but there's a lot of things that they, people don't, the average person might not know about pain. Number one is that your hormones are huge in helping you to not have pain, right, namely right. testosterone. Exactly testosterone right. optimization is so important for both men and women yeah. who have body pain, joint pain, muscle pain, headaches, progesterone with headaches with a lot of women, a lot of women with their you know, any problems, it's a progesterone deficiency. So let me ask you a really critical question on this because you're the person to answer this. It's always been my opinion that autoimmune disorders, dysregulation, all of this shit that people invent, and obviously medicine has created diseases around so that they could prescribe things for. If hormones were optimized, not balanced, optimized, right? Difference, there's a difference or replaced. You know, people still say replaced. What the hell does that do? Replace a hormone that is cessating as you age, right? So if you were able to optimize a person's hormonal systems, would you probably eliminate almost all of that stuff? I think we could stop it before it starts. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I, knew you were gonna yeah. say. I think we can stop Heather, it. There are so that. few doctors that will say that though. Yeah, I'll say it. <laughs> I appreciate that you'll say it. Okay, and, continue. And, and I, you know, I have a lot of patients in my practice who um, may have been told they have an autoimmune phenomenon, oh, and I like to pull that disease label off it when we can. I mean, I'm not talking about everybody, but there are a lot of times where you know the immune system is not is not being satisfied right. um, when we're not optimized with our hormones. And I go through the whole cascade of how do we make hormones and why are they so important? And when the cortisol pathway is sucking you dry, it's converting your other corm exactly. hormones to make cortisol, you end up in, in a deficient state. And then you're vitamin D3 deficient and you're magnesium yep. deficient. And all of that leads to a dysregulated immune system. Yeah. And, um, and so many women, especially, um, you know, their testosterone levels have been neglected. Yeah. We make testosterone as young women. We just happen to make a lot more estrogen and progesterone. We don't look like men. We don't make as much testosterone as men, but we make enough that, you know, and, and keeping your bones strong takes all three, estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. Yeah. They, they work differently to keep your bones strong, but the testosterone in women is huge. Yeah. You know, retaining your muscle, recovery after exercise, eliminating body pain, clarity of thought, you know, stability of mood, better sleep. I mean, how better many sex. Oh yeah. Yes. <laughs> I mean to leave that out. <laughs> well, women, you know, so many women and they'll just say, well, I'm just not that interested anymore. Exactly. Cause they don't have any feeling for right. it. Right. right. Yeah. Their, their libido has been, has dropped in the toilet because the testosterone is gone. And, um, and they can have a whole different quality of life totally. just by optimizing, you know, their main hormones. And when it comes to, um, uh, we were talking about pain. I, I love talking about hormones. But another thing that happens with pain is a, is a low volume. We get dehydrated. Yeah. So when we're not consuming enough, not just consuming enough water, but when we're not hydrating our tissues, right. we're in an acidic state. Totally. And that's, that's painful. And it, it yeah. leads to the wrong cell signaling. You're um, absolutely right. And no one talks about alkalinity of tissue. Right. And it's so important. It's so important. You're right. I mean, I mean, and again, that's why I have you on the podcast. I only bring people like you on. But, but the reality is, is that the system, and I don't want to go back to like devil's advocate, but the system teaches doctors how to survive. It doesn't teach them how to thrive. Yeah, and it teaches us how to practice sick medicine and not, exactly. keep, you know, prevent people from getting sick in a lot of ways. I mean, um, because I went through a traditional medical of program. Course. So, I mean, I, I, there's, there's a lot of different kinds of people out there. Um, there are people that, you know, that are, they're already sick and now we need to take care of them. But there's so many people who we could stop that from right, happening right, right, by right. keeping them in a healthier state, keeping them active, keeping them sleeping, keeping them in their relationships, you know, healthy relationships, intimacy, yeah. um, and everything else. And I, th I think just overhauling the whole system when, you know, people don't realize they should be consuming 60 to a hundred ounces of water a day. Not, that's not, well, I still literally coffee. drink a gallon and a half. I mean, as you can see, I've had drank two of these. And these are just, by the way, these are um, 
these are uh, Icelandic water in these bottles because I have my big Icelandic glass thing over here and I'm just putting it over here. So I know it's bad, it's plastic, but I mean, you know, you can't be perfect. Uh, yeah. But no, I, I'm totally with you. And, and again, I, I think, Heather, that, you know, the most women especially, they don't know how to seek treatment. Right. If they go to a PPO or an HMO, they're not going to get Dr. Heather Smith Fernandez, not even close. I know. So what do they do? Well, you watch podcasts like this. Mm -hmm. You go to where the tip of the spear is, you work, you learn, you listen, and then you reach out. And again, it, the internet makes things so simple. It's so easy to work with you. They can work with you direct to your website. They can work with you direct to Will Health. You know, yes. there's so many ways to make this happen, but it, it takes initiative and it takes a proactive person mm -hmm. who's not, you know, as you know, as we did it, well, my co-payment says I can only go here. I know. And that's, and, and, and unfortunately, you know, I think I want people to raise the bar out of yeah. what their expectation is for their own well-being in their own right, life. Right. Let's and, raise um, the vibration of yeah. medical treatment. Absolutely. We, we it's not really even call it medical treatment. Offer. Let's just call it wellness. Raise the vibration of wellness so that you stop seeking sick care practitioners or just the mindset of going to my benefits. It's just insanity. I mean, how many, you, even yourself, right? You got to go, because the only time you and I were ever in that is that we got to go get lab work. And right. you go there and you sit there and you watch the, you know, sheep being shepherded in through the system, the maze. It's insanity. I just, you know, I just had my annual uh, in January for blood. And I, you know, I had to go to lab court by my house and I just sat there and I wish I could have videotaped the whole thing. Right. But it's like mm. it's insanity, Heather. It's not, it's not what we really want for, you know, for our citizens. I, I, you know, I feel like we, we can and should do better than that. I usually will encourage patients, if you're not sure about all this, let us do an initial evaluation with your blood, blood work. You're yeah. going to be so surprised at what you learn. Right. What, you know, we're going to test different kinds exactly. of things than you're used to having tested. And you will walk away so empowered with knowledge. And then you can decide, well, maybe this is, you know, gosh, I could feel better. I don't have to be 50 pounds overweight. I could have energy. I could sleep better. I could be interested in you know, intimacy again, there's, yeah, there, yeah. there's potentially a whole different quality of life waiting for a lot of people. I think of how many women that have had two kids, three kids who now have, you know, thyroid dysregulation, obviously their hormones are in the shitter. You mm -hmm. then combine, you know, the assault on their endocrine systems from the environment. And they never even know that they could be back to what they, the way they felt like, you know, as a woman, like from that 20 to 30 range where they were horny and they desired intimacy and they craved physical, you know, touch and all that stuff. And it's like so many women, they have two or three kids and then that's it. And then as you know, they're never ever given the opportunity to do the things that you do. And as you know, any woman who's worked with you or, you know, doctors like you, and I can name names, you know, that you know who they are, mm -hmm. their life becomes, you know, they rebirth. It's a re it's a genesis. It's like a real life. It's like holy shit. I feel like I felt like when I was in my twenties. And I and you know this. Women actually experience even more profound effects than men. You know, one of my mentors said giving a woman hormones or optimizing a woman's hormones is like giving a dry plant water. Yeah, and a lot of a lot of women actually feel that way. They just can't believe exactly. um, how how alive and how much better they didn't know, think they yeah. could feel that much better. We've been conditioned to just yeah. say, "Oh, that's expected because right. you're at some age." Some right, a woman is at forty, and oh, you already had your kids; you're no good anymore. Right, right, you're right. Shame you're on us for ever right. saying that to somebody. You know, that's that's not shame. shame I'll be us. the first to say it that a woman between forty and fifty is optimized is the best sex on the planet. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. I mean, like there's, but you're right. I mean, the truth is, is that there are so many women that have been left behind, Heather. They, mm -hmm. they really have been left behind and they just don't know any better. And it's, it, 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 it really does come down to education and being proactive. It does. And then, you know, when we start talking about peptides, which you and I have talked about before, that takes it to a whole other level. Oh, yeah. There are going to be um, certain people who need a little bit more robust help in certain areas, whether it's with pain, whether it's with um, muscle, whether it's with sleep, whether it's, you know, with cognitive concentration. Sure. 
And we have the tools in, peptile, in peptology to be able to actually take them again to that next level. So let me just give you a little slice of your amazingness. Uh, so talk about peptide interventions for women specifically, um, in your opinion. And again, I know you're just giving, every person is individually and highly customized, but like just garden variety, like what peptides do you like for women um, from an intervention, from a sleep, improving sleep, improving fat loss, better skin elasticity, obviously better sex. I mean, really just better life. Better life. Well, for women um, in particular, um, we have a, a, an array of peptides. BPC-157, sure. which is body protective compound 157, is, is one of those peptides that satisfies so many different things. Yep. It's yep. very pain relieving. Yep. Um, it yep. helps with recovery. It helps your yep. gut. Yep. Um, it, it's, it's one of those that is super safe. Um, it's an isolate from human gastric juice. It's, it's a wonderful peptide. Then one of my favorite peptides is epitalin. Epitalin is, um, was studied in longevity medicine because it lengthens telomeres, yeah. but it does a whole lot of other things. It actually sensitizes the hypothalamus to your hormones. Right. So it's, a, it's one of those true anti-aging hormones. And when you use a small dose at night, especially with certain other peptides, it's fantastic for sleep. So it's are you? So, so I'm glad you said that. So epitalin, are you using it a couple of times a year? Or are you actually using it much more regularly? More like you know, more like nightly on a very small dose. Wow. The, the, the initial protocol was the seven day protocol, a couple times a year, yeah. and that's still, you know, that was the telomere lengthening um, protocol, and that obviously is still works for that. But there's a property with epitalin in the pineal gland that is so good for sleep that this little dose used on a regular basis. Um, especially used with CJC and ipamorelin, which are our growth hormone secretagogues that increase your body's own growth hormone release. It's an amazing synergistic. So Heather, you just melted my brain. So what is the dosage or do you need to tell me off air? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I mean, I, I actually teach doctors how to use these also so I can teach doctors how to do the, pe the, the, the protocols um, because that's what we need. We need more doctors that know how to do these. Did you um, teach, did you teach uh, Bill that? Cause I'm going to text him right now. <laughs> no, no, actually. Well, that you're talking about, I know who you're talking about. Um, no, that, but it did come up while we were all in the same room together. We were talking about Epitalin. Um, and I know not everybody really knows about that peptide, but as a, as a person like you who has been, I've been so focused on what's interfering with my sleep. When am I getting the better sleep? Yeah. Um, it's one of those things that I love. And then um, the other thing for women is GHK copper. So GHK copper, again, pain relieving, collagen producing, but you improve your collagen in your whole body, not just your face. So all of your skin actually has better collagen and it's much younger looking. GHK, I'm glad you gave me a personal plug there, even without even knowing, but no, GHKCU is literally the most amazing copper peptide on the planet. You know, obviously I'm my business partner and I sell it. Um, ben Greenfield and his wife have been using it. I'll, I'll give you another one. I don't know if you've tried this with it yet though, but for skin, um, combine it with red light therapy and wow, like nice. really wow. Like I'll just give you top secret stuff. Um, one of the biggest red light companies who will remain unnamed is doing something with our uh, peptide um, in combination. We're doing a study. We're doing a, a study with it right now. But Ben and his wife and my wife and some other people in my inner circle have been doing it, you know, for about a couple of months now. And I'm so anyway, you're singing the I mean, you're singing to the choir or singing to the hymnal. Uh, GHKCU is a transformational peptide. Um, one of the things that we're doing right now with one of the big hair loss uh, companies out there is it also in combination with carbon 60 regrows hair. So that's kind of, that's kind of new stuff. But when you see wow. what it does at the follicular level, you're going to be like, Oh my God, like I'm not using it because I don't want more hair. <laughs> <laughs> I like being like this. I don't have to worry about my hair, but it is amazing. I had a guy reach out to me two months ago and was like, dude, I heard Ben Greenfield talk to the, G, the carbon 60 guy, the Ian, whatever his name is. Mm -hmm. And he said that in theory. And so, you know, I reached out to my business partner, uh, Nick Andrews, who's like the genius biochemical engineer. He's like a uh, Ryan Smith. I said, dude, do you, what do you think? And he's like, well, he's right in theory, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, then the guy literally sends us a picture, Heather, three weeks ago, four weeks ago now and says, dude, look at this. I was using tailor-made GHKCU for hair loss, and this is what I had. And then I added C60 to it, and look. And I'm like, that's fake. Wow, that's amazing. No, and so they all know now, too, at tailor-made. But I was like, dude, 
are, are you not bullshitting me? He was just some biohacker in Portland who's a fan. <laughs> And so I was like, oh my God. So then we sent it to one of the hair loss companies that's down here in Southern California, big, big Vantis, and they're doing a clinical study right now. So they've got 10 patients, six, six men, four women. Cause as you know, hair loss is big with women too, actually. I didn't know that, but it's it really is. big. It is. And, and, and for women, it's absolutely devastating. It's just 21 devastating. million women in the United States suffer hair loss every year. And a lot of women don't, you know, they're, they're given some topical Rogaine, but they're, but, and sometimes, you know, but it's, but it's, it's so devastating for women yeah. to have. If this works, and, and again, we only have a couple of people, but I'll tell you this again, more info, which is amazing. Monica was using the GHK. I mean, I'm sorry. She always puts GHK CU, our cream on her face. And it's amazing mm -hmm. for that. But she was using, when she watched a podcast, C60, just a micro dab of like a Q-tip. And I swear to you, she had hair growing on the skin right there. She was like, dude, oh my gosh. <laughs> for seven days, she was in New Zealand or Iceland with her, her son when she was doing it. And she was like, what the hell? She didn't, you know, she couldn't see it because it was microscopic, but you know, under the high magnification mirror, she was like, oh my God. So then she took a picture and sent it to me and I sent it to Nick and then we sent it to Vanis guys and they're like, dude, <laughs> so there, I mean, there, I mean, I swear this is so crazy, but the study started last Monday. <laughs> oh my gosh. Right when all this shit hit the fan. So I, I don't really know what's going on with people right now. Hopefully they're actually keeping up with the protocol, but it's just, yeah. uh, there is, as you know, we'll end the show with this. We are on the verge of a biomedical revolution. We have all these wonderful technologies. We have these amazing doctors teaching peptide interventions, hormone interventions, I mean, what you just taught me about a petalon that nightly, that's amazing. I mean, I'm going to talk to you when this podcast ends about that, but um, we're so close. The golden age is really that close. We just now have to get through this, whatever this really is. And then imagine all the stuff that's going to be in the universe. Talk about that for a second to end the show. Um, I, I think that one of the most wonderful platforms and your, your podcast is just a, a, so good at bringing information to people. And we're now in a informational sharing age. And I think that's going to so benefit people will be asking for the better treatments. They're yes. going to be you know, seeking out. And if their doctor doesn't know how to help them, hopefully they're, they'll encourage their doctor to go get training and we'll go right. figure out how to do this and learn this. Or hopefully sick care, Heather, just collapses altogether and people like you will be training doctors to be on their own. That's, you know, ultimately we, we just really want to raise, you know, our, our statistics for healthcare compared to the rest of the world are, are embarrassing and we need to do a much better job than that. We have tremendous resources. We have amazing citizens. We have amazing doctors, um, people who spent 12, 13, 14 years in higher education trying to take care of people. And we need to be, you know, able to give them the tools they need, give them the education to know how to do this. Um, yes, so I think that we're on, the, we're on the cusp of a very exciting time. Yeah. Very, I'm, yeah. I'm yeah. very excited about where we are. Um, we between be. all the, the solid studies we have about hormone medicine, so many people you know, had one not poorly done study that they're basing all of their uh, opinion about hormones on. We have copious studies now that show the benefits of hormone optimization. Yeah. And so the more we have that, you know, the peptide revolution, it's, it's so exciting. Um, and I actually have a gift for your listeners. Can Beautiful. I, I was now? just going to ask you, so what's the best way that obviously people can work with you? You know, obviously they can work with you direct through Live Health, but just working yes. with you direct through your website and connecting with you, what's the best way? They, well, on, on my website, um, we created um, a, a top 10 conditions that can be treated with peptides and give an example of a peptide for at least one peptide for each one of those things. And it's a PDF. Um, we have for uh, an area for physicians, the, the, I know physicians watch, you know, your oh, show. Yeah. And if they, I can, I'll give them a free protocol from my, my peptology group of protocols. I'll give them at least one peptide protocol. If the phys physician can go there. The non-physicians that want to get the rest, they can go on the non-physician side. It's drheather.net slash J. Awesome. You are amazing. You're like one of the most advanced doctor marketers ever. I didn't even, by the way, even coach you in doing that. That is really good, Heather. Oh, I wanted to be able to share something with your listeners. It was such a pleasure to be on. And I yeah, thought, well, it was so awesome. this would be something so that would have awesome. in your hand. 
Uh, I mean, honestly, so awesome. I so appreciate you. I did want to say something to you. I don't you know if you know this. I just found this out two days ago, but almost 99% of the research um, on, for males um, on testosterone that shows you know, comorbidity issues or negative ramifications is with androgel. So think about that. Yeah. I know that androgel is utterly useless. Yeah. And it shouldn't even be, I mean, like every study that was done with androgel should just be instantly thrown out because we know it's not effective anyway. Right. I mean, exactly. So you've, you've talked about androgel before, um, but that's not what we call hormone optimization. We call hormone optimization actually getting your levels into the optimal range. And for some men, that's not even going to be higher than for other men. But for the most part, we're looking at you know, 900, I, I actually like it more to be a thousand, you know, total testosterone to 1500, sure, sure. For the average man. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and we don't forget about women, women, we, you know, you're going to feel so much better when your testosterone is optimized. And yeah. I'm going to have you back on to, to go deeper down the rabbit hole to sure. talk about hormone optimization, you know, very okay. soon, honestly, I, but I think that this podcast was amazing. I'm, I'm going to cut off a lot of people that are in the funnel right now. And it's unfortunate for them because they're amazing that they weren't in the right place at the right time as you and I were. So honestly, I'm glad that you and I delayed our podcast because <laughs> there are no coincidences and everything happened perfectly. And I think you gave a lot of really high value intel and wisdom on what to do. Um, you know, the thing about not having fear. I mean, let's just, let's just start putting this out there. You and I created this today. Let's raise the vibration of the wellness industry. I hate even saying medicine because it's so connotated with sick care. But let's, let's, let's literally encourage all of our network and our community to raise the vibration now, right now, to get out of a state of fear, to get into a state of love and connection and joy and serenity and peace. And of course, how that will come by getting good sleep. So Heather, honestly, it was so amazing. Guys, everybody who watches the show, please go to Dr. Heather dot net download the pdf if you're a clinician and you're watching the show for god's sakes learn about peptides and she's like one of the best with peptology so heather amazing i appreciate you you. Um, we'll talk off the air so guys as always if you're watching this podcast support the amazing people that come on again dr heather dot net and remember raise your vibration to optimize your love creation we'll see you guys soon thank you